What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Now, as many of you guys know, part of our work here at Prince of Travel involves sampling and reviewing different luxury hotels and resorts around the world. And so welcome to the inaugural episode of the Hotel Hop here on the YouTube channel in the city of Hong Kong. And we're gonna start out at the St. Regis. Welcome to the St. Regis, Hong Kong, an oasis of indulgence in the otherwise bustling Wan Chai district. As soon as you arrive, the neutral colors and soft lighting make you feel as though you've just gotten home into your luxury mansion in the middle of the city. For this stay, I was assigned a grand deluxe king room, 1508. As soon as I entered, I was impressed by its size for a base level room, and I loved the way that all the interior elements fit together. I was quite happy with most of the spaces, including this little cocoon in the corner, the comfort of the king size bed, the availability of USB plugs on the bedside table, and the views, albeit limited, of Victoria Harbour and Kowloon on the opposite side. Now my first impressions of the St. Regis Hong Kong. First of all, this place is really nice. It looks amazing. The service is fantastic. The decor is magnificent. And all that is to be expected given the price point. Now since this is a relatively new St. Regis hotel, I am a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to get a sweet upgrade even as a Titanium Elite member with Marriott Bonvoy. However, that's also somewhat to be expected because the hotel only has 10 suites available. So it's one of those hotels with relatively few suites and if you are staying here, you do need to temper your expectations in the sense that an upgrade would be something that's nice to have but something that perhaps can't really be an expectation. Now the positive thing though about this hotel is that even though the suites are limited in number, the guest rooms, the base level rooms, are actually really big. They're about 50 square meters or 500 square feet, which is pretty sizable for a decent base room. So if you're coming to the St. Regis Hong Kong, and even if you don't get a suite upgrade, it's still gonna be a super nice experience, especially since all the elements of the St. Regis brand, including coffee via butler service, are available. The luxurious marble bathroom was also a highlight of the St. Regis Hong Kong's Grand Deluxe Rooms, featuring an oversized bathtub, double sinks, and a special pedestal for all the bathroom amenities. There were separate chambers for the toilet and the shower, although I do have to say that the shower's water pressure was a little bit weak and left me a little bit disappointed. I've just come back to the hotel after a long day out. I've actually just gotten the first dose of my COVID-19 vaccine right here. So I'm feeling, if not some side effects, then some placebo effects. But nevertheless, I'm delighted that the hotel has left me a little titanium elite welcome amenity here, which I'm gonna snack on. And I also ordered a pot of the Earl Grey tea through the butler service to go along with it. Well, it's almost time for bed and here at the St. Regis you can text the butler service and I'm just gonna go ask for some black coffee in the morning to help me wake up. Breakfast at the St. Regis Hong Kong consists of a mixed a la carte menu and a beautifully put together breakfast buffet. 
the buffet had a good mix of cold and hot items, as well as Asian and Western inspired cuisines. Now compared to other breakfast buffets around Asia, the size and variety was arguably not quite as impressive, but that's okay because the a la carte menu took care of the rest. And indeed, in my case, since I was limited on time, I decided to go straight for a Japanese set breakfast from the a la carte menu, starting my day with a delicious steak of salmon. Before departing the hotel, I also had a chance to check out some of its additional amenities, including the fitness center, which was fairly well equipped, as well as the outdoor pool, which was unfortunately soaked in rain on my visit. It's getting close to my 4 p.m. late checkout here at the St. Regis. I must say I've enjoyed my stay, but I am very much looking forward to the next one. We're gonna be popping over all the way out across the harbor, right there. Whenever I'm in Hong Kong, I'm always captivated by the city's incredible urban infrastructure, especially the undersea tunnels. And it was a breezy ride through one of these that brought me over to the Ritz-Carlton on the other side of the harbor. We're going all the way up to the 103rd floor, way up above the city for check-in. Now here at the Ritz-Carlton Hong Kong, I was assigned a deluxe suite with Victoria Harbor views as a Titanium Elite member. And I'll let the suite tour speak for itself. And even though the rest of the suite was merely an afterthought compared to the views themselves, it was still a very comfortable place for a one night stay. So, if you've ever seen people taking photos like this here at the Ritz Carlton Hong Kong, well now you know how it's done. You've got the blankets, you've got the pillows from the bed over there, but the reality is it's actually pretty uncomfortable. So I'm gonna get out of here. Situated 100 floors above one of the most ostentatiously wealthy cities in the world, the Ritz-Carlton Hong Kong likes to show itself off, as you can imagine. I have heard that the Tin Lung Hin Dim Sum restaurant is one of the best in the world, and it's definitely something I want to try next time. For now, I toured some of the hotel's other sky-high facilities, including the swimming pool, which possessed killer views of the Victoria Harbor, and the Ozone Bar, the world's highest bar, which, as you guessed it, possessed killer views of Victoria Harbor. After a busy day in town, it was time to head right across the Kowloon ICC shopping mall to the W. Here at the W, I was assigned a fabulous king room with oceanfront views. It had a full bathroom with a bathtub, toilet, and shower. And I'm pleased to say that the water pressure on the shower here was the most powerful blast I've encountered in a long time. 
The rest of the room was pretty simple, and arguably it didn't push too many boundaries in terms of interior design compared to other W hotels around the world. I quite liked the views of the breakwater here in the harbor. I thought the 30th floor views were a nice contrast from the 100th floor views the day before. Here in these fabulous rooms, there's no double sinks, but there is double taps as part of a single sink. That's the first time that I've ever seen something like that. I've now checked into the W Hong Kong. They gave me this fabulous room with a pretty nice oceanfront view. Now this is the penultimate level of guest rooms before we get to the suites. And I was really looking forward to hopefully getting a suite upgrade as a Titania member, especially since I really love the W Hotels brand. And especially when you get an upgrade to a suite, it's usually a really nice experience. But unfortunately, once again, all the local staycationers ended up booking the suites at this hotel, especially since it's a weekend. So it's not even the case that there were suites available, but they weren't gonna give it to me. There's just no more suites available to upgrade to. Anyway, I've had a pretty long day today. I've had to run a bunch of errands around town. I've got about an hour and a half before my dinner plans. So it's time to rest a bit and wash up a bit before I go back out. Okay, that was a late one. It's about 2.30 a.m. right now and got a morning flight tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. So, gotta be an earlier departure too. Gonna get a few hours of sleep and then we'll go take a look at the rest of the hotel in the morning. My personal highlight of the W Hong Kong was its very impressive breakfast spread featuring so many items from all around the world. And as is customary at W Hotels, everything was presented in a beautiful way too. My favorites was the Japanese station, which featured sushi, salmon rice bowls, and a make your own udon and soba noodles bar. I've got about an hour and a half before I have to go to the airport. Don't have much time this morning, but it was important to squeeze time out for this breakfast buffet. W Hotels usually do a killer breakfast, especially here in Asia. And this one is no exception. Before leaving the hotel, I paid a quick visit to the fog enshrouded rooftop pool on the 72nd floor, as well as the fitness center and I did wish I had more time to make use of these facilities. That'll have to be something that I leave for next time instead. And in the midst of the heavy fog and rain, I made my way to Kowloon Station right downstairs, and it was a 20 minute ride on the Airport Express to Hong Kong International Airport.